everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. About to go uh, chill for a little bit. So I decided to address something that I meant to address yesterday and sort of uh, got away from me. Uh, everybody's been talking about this whole Ima Udoka uh, situation with the Celtics and everybody's got a point of view and a, uh, an opinion which is okay, everybody has that right. Um, I try my best to use moments like that as a means of sharing and teaching. Uh, is there a teachable moment? I don't jump on trends just because they're hot. I look for things that we can learn from, things that we can grow from, things that we can observe. And I look for ways to bring it forth and, and so hopefully sparking some challenges for us to raise the level of our engagement of the stimuli around us and how it's used against us and how we react to it rather than respond to it. Um, before I get started on what I want to talk about today, uh, don't forget uh, we are in the midst of a fundraiser so we would love to have your support for the work that we've been doing in the community for several decades now. I've been in this game for a long time uh, I've worked the hell out of my adult years, uh, 55 as of July, and still going strong. Um, look, uh, we dealt with the Imuka, uh, I mean, Ima Udoko thing. Uh, that's something I found out that, you know, pretty much did it for me. Uh, finally identified who uh, this woman is and it wasn't the woman that everybody thought it was it was someone else and I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't even want to get to digging at the brother but I'm, I'm disappointed uh, I was disappointed anyway because you know when we're trying to set models and we're modeling manhood we don't get to say well everybody does this so it's not a big deal when it's something that's wrong and it causes harm to other people we don't get to do that we need to, we need to quit that we need to quit thinking because it's always been around that it's okay. One of the problems is so much of our dysfunction has always been around. So miss me with that. We need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Uh, I, I'm not saying people don't make mistakes. I'm not saying a bunch of things. What I'm saying is you don't get a pass because it's always been around. How about we hold one another accountable without tearing each other apart? and tearing each other down. You can hold someone accountable without tearing them down. I've never gone after him. I've wished him the best. And I still think he's getting a raw deal on the suspension. But also, uh, if you're going to risk it all, that, that can't be what you're risking it all for. But again, that's a whole other thing. Let's move on to what I want to talk about today. Again, one of my most consistent themes in addressing issues in the black community has been our inability to gain some form of a per some form of perspicacity and understanding of how things work how things work in finance how things work in academia how things work in politics how things work in social uh uh, uh in engineering and, and all the different ways how things work in media how things work through the use of propaganda. All of these things are mechanisms and machinations that have been used against us because we simply don't understand how things work. Here's another prime example. Uh, LL, who is one of my favorite artists of all times, uh, recently went on, I guess, Instagram uh, and did a video to address a certain DJ who shall not be named on this channel who is trash, who is always dissing uh, pioneers, who is always starting crap within the community, who has no true love or respect for the game. He's trash. Uh, so, but anyway, he addressed it because it, uh, this particular person, you know, called the pioneers of hip hop dusty, primarily because they didn't have, they don't have the bag. They, they don't have the money that these young cats are getting. And LL addressed it, I think, as good as it could have been. To me, I would have probably been a little more hot and a little more passionate. But I think he, he addressed it. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing that I think we all miss in this, in our debates about what's going on in hip-hop and where the talent level is in hip-hop, where the respect is missing in hip-hop from these young heads uh, and not respecting the game, not respecting the originators and the pioneers 
uh, of, a, of an art form of a an entire culture here is this thing right so the problem is we're looking at it and debating about not being respected in the origin and I'll give my sister Neota Yorora a great deal of credit for pointing this out right out the box right out the box um, what she did, tends to do a lot is she catches a lot of heat and flag for it and I will consistently stand behind her and uh, cover her and be ready to touch anybody that comes anywhere close to her so you, you understand that sister's off limits please understand that's not just coming from the voice of one brother if anything ever happens to her the whole world will shift now back to um, what I'm talking about here we're debating respect and I get it respect is the biggest thing in in a man's uh, existence I, I, I've tried to communicate that to clients I've tried to communicate that in lectures I've tried to communicate that in at least several books uh, that we are different than women we we, we want love, but the way we interpret love is through how much we feel respected. Not how much you dote over us, not how much you say you love us, not how mu much, you know, all the romance and all that stuff is cool and it has its place, but how are you in, in respect to me? So when, so when you got a large part of the prison population are there because in some way or another, a person felt disrespected. You know, from you on my block to you mess with my girl to all kinds of stuff. You 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 mess with my money. All of it ties back to feeling disrespected. So we understand that there's this great need and demand for respect. And when someone feels disrespected, they tend to respond in a certain way. So I get that. We need to answer that. We need to address how disrespectful these young cats are. And but we need to understand first and foremost on uh, on, a, on a slightly high level why they're disrespectful. They're disrespectful because they have been conditioned and programmed to believe that their bank accounts gives them prevalence, that their bank account is what ascribes to them true manhood. Their bank account is what determines how successful and influential they are. And they don't understand that their bank accounts are simply a reflection of a, a, a time and space in which value isn't given to talent, value isn't given to art form, value, value is simply given to what can be promoted the best and put out there and what you can put a dope beat behind. And that is what has been selling for quite some time now. It's a long time ago, they started hiding behind beats. And once you start hiding behind beats, you get people hooked on beats, people who are naturally rhythmic, hooked on beats. They not even listen. I don't know how many times I heard people say, man, I ain't know that song said that. You done heard the song a hundred times. You didn't know it said it because all you worried about is the beats. I'm listening at the lyrics. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what it's saying. Why should I be listening to it? Why should I be feeding my subconscious uh, this? Because my subconscious is deciphering it. And my subconscious is drawing conclusions. And my subconscious is sit up, sitting up and doing it. So, so in essence, we lost that. And so... We have a responsibility as a generation to rewrite a narrative uh, of focus, character, and values. We've got to place more value on men being protectors, more value on men being providers, more value on men being respectful to one another and to our women, uh, more, more value on men building businesses, more value on men, black men owning what we put our energy and our efforts and our talents into. Now that takes me to the final point here. We're arguing and debating and talking about who started what. And yet, once again, what we don't realize is that regardless of who started what, regardless of who's not getting respected, white people are eating off of our talent. White people are eating off of our in inventions, our creations, and they're eating handedly. I mean, they're eating well. Prime example, tw the numbers for 2021 shows that there was a 23% increase in revenue, in music revenue, uh, on, 
and, and that's everything with the exceptions, I think, do, digital downloads. Uh, that means that it's a $15 billion a year industry. That's a 23% increase. And that includes across genres. No genre suffered. All genres increased in revenue. And that includes hip hop, that includes R&B. And that, that means that includes us and our influences. And we influence, whether we realize it or not, almost every other genre. So then here we go with a situation where the industry and labels and uh, our eat, record labels are eating off of us at an astronomical rate because the vast majority of that revenue goes to the record label. Artists get the vast majority of their revenue from tours, from events, from appearances. And so we are sitting up and we are selling the very talent. And it's not just happening in music. It's happening in the NBA. It's happening in the NFL. We are constantly complaining about what's happening to us in these particular spaces. Just like we're complaining about what's happening with Ima Odoku uh, being suspended for a year when uh, the owner of, the in, uh, of an NBA team in Phoenix has created a 20 year reign of terror uh, where he's, 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 he's practiced racism and misogyny at an astronomical rate, created an entire environment and culture where no one's comfortable and he got suspended for a year. He wasn't forced to sell, he voluntarily decided to sell and he's gonna sell probably for double uh, the actual value of the organization and we'll probably uh, try to be a part of getting that so that we can say we own at least a part of a team and so he'll actually be enriched for doing something devastating and you know so, so, same sort of thing what was his name uh sterling uh for a few years back these guys are who they are and they are all from the old school of uh extreme wealth most of this wealth comes generationally so it's passed out along with the character along with the mindset along with the idea that they are entitled along with the idea that certain people don't uh, deserve to be in their spaces without paying homage to them and we're sitting up and we're we're rewarding that what am i getting at in and, and, and i said this a long time ago and, and, and it goes for anything in any industry in any area of, of market and, and enterprise where you dominate the talent you dominate the spending then you should dominate ownership and control the beauty supply industry, a $15 billion a year industry, 96% of that revenue is generated by black people. Can you imagine we dominate spending in the beauty supply industry at, uh, 90, at a rate of 96%? 96% of all the revenue coming through beauty supply or anything that would be categorized as beauty supply is actually coming from us, and yet we own less than 3% of businesses in the beauty supply industry. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And again, because we don't understand how things work, we tend to fail even when we do attempt to enter the market because we don't understand vertical economics. We don't understand the importance of not just being at the retail level, but being at the distribution and the manufacturing level so you can control pricing. We get priced out because we don't control manufacturing and distribution. Whole nother thing, but that's another thing we're talking about. We don't have an understanding of how things work. But if we want to talk about hip hop, and again, thanks to LL for addressing that clown and making it clear because one of the things he pointed out is we can't equate success to money. Not on that level. Uh, you need to have more of a standard because the problem is we got a young, bunch of young cats chasing the bag because they've been told that the bag by itself makes them a high value man. That it, it literally defines their manhood and that bag doesn't mean anything. I know a bunch of immature runts running around with a bag, killing and being killed. And we see in it every day. These kids are getting the bag and don't know what to do with it. They're getting the bag and they're actually thinking that the bag makes them greater than the elders, greater than the ancestors, greater than the originators. Great. Why? Because they got the bag and the bag doesn't mean nothing when you're spending the vast majority of the bag back into their economy and, in, and, and giving them. So they are paying you knowing that you're going to eventually come back and spend with them in some form or another within the white 
economic ecosystem and meaning that it comes back to us and we'll so we'll pay you uh, several million dollars and then you're going to come spend it you're going to buy the jewelry you're going to buy the cars you're going to buy the clothes you got to prove you have it so you're constantly buying symbols of success rather than building success which doesn't be which doesn't scream and announce itself it flows smoothly and it grows strong and it establishes itself and you may not even know it's there until you move against it and you feel it that's what we're missing and if we don't really uh get a hold of what we're doing we're going to have a lot more problems than we have right now and we have plenty but we, we're not even close to what it's gonna look like if we don't gain a sense of understanding of how to move in this world, if we don't gain an understanding of what's important in this world and how we can move and how we can operate. Again, I'm calling on everyone to stand up and pay attention to what's going on around you. Yes, we do need to be respected. The people, those of us who have put thousands upon thousands upon hours of, into our craft to do whatever we do in our area, need a certain level of respect we don't have it uh they don't feel it, it's owed to us and it shows and the problem is that's a spiritual disruption when that happens that's a breaking of the spiritual ecosystem that holds things together when that happens so what happens is they think they're dissing us but they're really destroying themselves and they don't realize it we need to maintain we need to sustain we need to come together we need to unite that needs to be across the board so what am I what am I saying? I'm saying that beyond the debates on the superficial level about things that really truly should matter to us, uh, respect should matter to everyone. But it can't be the end game. It can't be the only thing we talk about. We got to talk about causality. We don't look at the law of cause and effect enough. We don't look at how things happen and where we come from and how. Uh, things come to be and we, we tend to miss it. We don't gain an understanding of how things work. So we are constantly reacting to things because they frustrate us instead of looking at how we can create solutions to overcome them. That's a problem. That's the thing we're going to have to do. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here and get in and, you know, unwind and, 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 and chill for a while. And I may even go back and do some more work, but I had to drop this. I'm going to get it uploaded while I'm in here so you guys can check it out. But take care of yourselves don't forget if you believe in the work we're doing everything from our research center at the odyssey project black men lead restoring ghettos forgotten daughters music is life all of these programs don't forget our mental health uh, resources and wraparound services for young black men and young black women all of these things are things we need in our communities and we need the support to be able to resource the demand and we don't have that support so again if you believe in the work we're doing go into the description box click the link um, leave a comment and do whatever else you want to do but definitely show some love on that note i'm out of here i'm about to go in and relax